Hi, this is your BCBA, Katie Cook. Nice to see you all. We just had a great question about the difference between partial interval recording and whole interval recording. And I hope I can shed some light on that topic. I think one of the reasons why it is a little confusing is in some of the examples we use, specifically in our homework practice assignment, um, that example is very, very short, fast intervals. And that's actually not super common in the field when you're using this type of recording. Um, we, we made an example where there were 10, 10 second intervals so that the homework assignment could be done quickly. The principles are going to be the same on how you complete the interval recording, but it's not very common that you're going to have 10, 10 second intervals and have a very short, um, observation period like that. Um, reason being, you probably would do continuous measurement, actually. If you're only going to observe for 100 seconds, you might as well just tally a frequency or even get some durations of a behavior rather than trying to do interval recording. So let's do a different type of example. It might uh, make it easier to understand. Um, let's say you had a school day and the intervals were one hour in length each. Always your intervals are going to be equal in length. So let's say we had a six hour school day, we might have six one hour intervals. So whether you're doing partial interval recording or whole interval recording, you're going to need to have equal length intervals and you're gonna to need to decide like how long is the total observation and how long are my intervals? How many are there? So we have six one hour intervals. The total observation is the school day, a six hour school day. That would be more common. And a teacher might be asked to record either partial or whole interval recording for a behavior. And let's come up with an example. So if we were gonna do an example of partial interval recording, um, we might the, ask the teacher to record of the behavior of let's say aggression, like hitting. And we'll just be very specific, hitting behavior. If hitting behavior was happening at school, we might ask the teacher to do partial interval recording for hitting and the school day would be broken up into six one hour intervals. And for the first hour of the school day, if the child or client hit at all, once, twice, the whole hour straight, it wouldn't matter if it happened for any part of that first interval, if the hitting occurred, the interval would be marked. Yes, that, that it did occur. Now the second hour of the day, if hitting occurred at all, it could happen once, twice, or for the whole hour straight. If it happened for any part of that second hour of the day, the second interval will be marked yes. And maybe for the third, fourth, fifth, and sixth interval, maybe those last four intervals, those last four hours of the day, no hitting occurred at all. Not any part of those hour long intervals did hitting occur. And if that's the case, we could mark those as no intervals. But from my example, the first two intervals of the day, were marked as yes intervals because hitting did occur a little bit, let's say during those first two hours, those first two intervals. So we have to mark those as yes. And the other four are marked as no, because hitting didn't occur at all. Um, and for the partial interval recording, we'd say two out of six, um, which I believe it would be 33%. I hope my math is right. Um, so for 33% of the observation, yeah, no oops, sorry about that. Um, so let's talk about whole interval. I wouldn't probably do whole interval recording for the behavior of um, hitting, but if we still had a school day and we had six one hour intervals, the behavior of hitting would never happen for a whole hour straight. It's not a, a behavior that has a long duration to it. So it wouldn't make any sense to say, let's collect some whole interval data on hitting for the school day. So we just wouldn't do it. I mean, we would do our partial interval or we would do a tally um, or, you know, for hitting, but we wouldn't, we wouldn't be asked or ask anyone else to do whole interval recording for hitting behavior for a school day. Cause it just doesn't make any sense. So instead we might collect some whole interval data for behavior. We want to increase like sitting in the seat and sitting in seat. So we might ask a teacher to collect whole interval. Let's change the screen here. Cause we're going to talk about whole interval. Oops. Let's see. Let's, there we go whole interval recording. We have in this example, I'm going to give six one hour intervals. If the client or student 
stays in their seat. The behavior is in seat. We're going to measure. We're actually going to try to increase this behavior of the child being in their seat. Um, if and only if the child is in their seat the whole hour of that first hour of the day, that first interval, we can mark it as a yes. But the behavior we're measuring, if it's sitting in seat, that behavior must occur for the entire whole interval, meaning the entire hour. If it happened where the child was in their seat for 10 minutes of the first hour of the day, for half an hour of the first hour of the day, for 99% of that first hour of the day, we would mark it as no interval. Because only if the behavior we're measuring of sitting in seat happens for the whole hour, for that whole interval, it happens to be an hour long, are we going to mark it as a yes? So let's pretend that in the first interval of the school day, that first hour, the child is in their seat quite a bit, but they are popping up out of their seat from time to time. So yes, we see in seat behavior happening in that first hour, but they're popping up out of their seat quite a bit. That in seat behavior did not occur the whole hour straight. So we have to mark it as a no. And then for this example, we could uh, pretend that for the second hour and third hour and fourth and fifth and sixth hour of the school day, those last five intervals, somehow the client did stay in their seat <laughs> the whole five hours of the school day at the end of the day. And if they sat in their seat somehow for every minute of, of every hour for those last five hours, then we could mark those as yes. But the client would have to be in their seat for the whole hour just to mark that hour interval as a yes. And so we're pretending that in the beginning of the day, that first hour, the client was in their seat, but also popping up out of their seat. So we marked that first interval as a no. But for the last five hours of the day, somehow they stayed in their seat for every minute of the whole hour for the last five intervals. So we have a no interval as our interval one and our and then the other five intervals we marked as yes. So we have one, uh, so we have five out of six. Yes, the behavior occurred. So if I tried to do the percentage on that, oh gosh, I think it's around 83%. Um, because five out of six intervals, the in seat behavior occurred for the whole interval, then we could say 83%, five out of six. So I hope that explains it a little bit better. Uh, it's an excellent question. It's a complicated topic, um, and I hope that that clears it up for you guys a little bit. All right, I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.